Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with some guests on DoD 45, and what a guest to be back with on today's episode. It is M. Saeed of Anti-Pop Consortium. Put your ears to the speakers, put your eyes to the telev. Check it. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Stop what you're doing and listen. D-O-D. This is the DoD 45 show, drawing over discussions 45 minutes with a special guest. Welcome. I'm your host and resident artist, Ty of Art by Ty, and with my co-host, Adrian Taiwali'i, we're having conversations with people who I admire and am inspired by. On this episode, I'll set a 45-minute timer, put my pen to the paper, and we'll learn about our guest through an interview-style discussion. So stay right here with us to experience some laughs and maybe even learn a thing or two. Oh, qua tens in one, Adrian. Hello. What's up? You've been painting all day today. How'd you know? Uh, when I went for my run, I saw you out front in your overalls painting the white fence. You're supposed to let the Mark, Quain, Mark Twain kids do that. That would never happen. I know. Not our kids, but the Mark Twain well, neither. fence paint, white fence paint. No, they'll just painting. get paint everywhere i don't need paint i don't need a bigger mess than what i'm gonna make how far have you got i got past the high part it doesn't matter i mean nobody knows what where our fence is oh our white fence picket fence i got a little bit into it well i was curious i'm just starting to get there oh geez just the what oh geez that seems like a lot of work fence painting you're hand painting it too not spraying it but you sprayed it when, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You're right. I sprayed the backside when we first did it, and oh. all, all that happened was that the sprayer got clogged, and then I ended up just painting it by hand anyway. Okay. And so I'm not right. painting the whole thing. I'm just doing the front. What happened right. was we received a package from FedEx, and you know how they take a picture of your, to prove that, sorry, to prove that they um, dropped it off. Mm-hmm. In that photo, I just, the house looked like crap because the fence painting was bad. Well, heads gotten run down. So yeah, it's been what about eight years since the fence has been painted? Maybe five. I was thinking five. I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what I just learned the other night. Well, I've always known it, but I heard Doc. You know, Doctor Agus. You ta- you mm-hmm. text with Doctor yeah. Agus. That's. I saw a clip where he was saying, "For a long life." Do you know what it is? Yeah, I saw it too. Yeah, avoid retiring. <laughs> And I just thought it was funny because I'll, I always say, I just want to retire. But I don't actually want to just like retire and do nothing. I want to I want to just not have to. I don't know what I want. But the word right, retire sounds cool. We do have a friend who's retired and he's in his 70s and he seems to be doing just fine. Who? Kilo. <laughs> well, he's 70 something. Yeah, but uh, he's like 75. You're he's not. He's retired. Well, no, no, no. And you want to retire t- yesterday. No, what I, I, my point is lots of people, like right when they retire, it's like a year later they just die, it seems like, because they're not, you know, there's nothing to fight to stay alive for, mm-hmm. I guess. Maybe that's, is that what Dr. Agus was saying? Uh, I don't. Oh. I think it's just you, your drive uh, goes away because- you just I don't know what people do when they retire. It doesn't sound fun to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think my 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 idea of retirement is not like, oh, I'm going to retire from work. I want to retire from having to always have to go do a show or always grinding where it can just be, oh, you know what? I'm just going to draw this today or I'm just going to do this today. That, was, this that today. is not who you are, so just <laughs> get that out of your head. I know. Well, I don't really want to You'll retire. just make up sh- – different shit to do to I, make yourself grind all i want to do is is um travel like our guest today um i'm gonna call him well saeed but he's some i've heard people refer to him as m saeed anyway he lives in paris france and so i've been thinking about france a lot i just want to travel more we travel a lot but now i that's all i want to do so well uh the like before figure out how to work into the travel and we can make it happen yep 
let's do a gallery show in 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 Paris. I actually I didn't I liked everywhere else out more than Paris. What Inverness? What was the place where we first went? Where that lake was when we first got into France? Inverness or something like that? No, that's Scotland. Uh, oh no, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Remember there was a big lake and we was kind of in the mountainous area. It started with an A. Shoot, I was going to ask you. Annecy? Oh, yeah, Annecy. That was cool. I liked that. But that wasn't actually. That was, uh, I think, I'm wasn't pretty sure. Germany and France? No, I'm pretty sure that's closer to um, Austria. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's where we were. Anyway, I, lo I really like uh, France. Um. Do you have anything? Uh, you know what I? You know what I'm got to do. Uh, I'm working on Miles Bones album cover, which I'm feeling really good about. I'm also working on the second album from uh, Brett Fullerton and Mr. Dibbs. I'm also working on that album cover. That one should be coming out soon. Um, and I'm also doing a book, uh, comic book cover. And it's also we're right in the midst of March Madness. <laughs> oh shit. Anna C is near Switzerland. Oh, okay. And I'm supposed to be doing, I forgot, but I'm supposed to be doing some sort of logo or something for my brother's football team. My brother coaches football. I, I forgot suggested about that. he go elsewhere for that. Oh, to, to him? To you, or to, uh, to yeah, suggest to him. I, one of my biggest problems is saying no. I've never been good at it. <laughs> um, so I got a lot on my plate. Hopefully people are taking advantage of March Madness. And um, I look forward to you guys seeing the the new the new book. Even you seeing it. it's pretty cool. I feel pretty cool, pretty good about it. Hey, you know what? You were gonna ask, you asked me um, to bring up Alzheimer's the other day, and so Alzheimer's oh does gosh. not fit in. That means that I don't necessarily have Alzheimer's right now because I remembered that. That's right. I don't know if I should go into this, but I have this friend who I went out with right before we left Utah. And you were dating somebody before we left Utah. I said a friend who you went out with. Right, we, we went out for drinks. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, she was raised by her grandparents, and her grandparents are now like r extremely old. And her grandma has Alzheimer's. Oh, and actually, Alzheimer's or dementia? yeah, hmm. Alzheimer's. And she goes over there once a week and cooks and cleans and does a bunch of things for. Her. Well, she gets this call. From her grandma and said, her grandma said, you know, I've had an accident. Can you come help clean me up? Uh -oh. And I don't know how she remembered to call her or how that even, how someone with Alzheimer's even knows how to call. Anyway, so she goes over there and hospice is supposed to be bathing her a couple times a week. But because of the Alzheimer's, they kind of skip out because they think it makes them uh, agitated. Oh. So she goes over there and she starts helping clean her up. And she was like. This is probably really bad. Her bush, her privates, was dreaded. Oh, with duty, man. And she had to cut the dreads. Your friend, who I know, was cutting her, the dreads off her, off grandma's, her grandma's bush. Wow. And the I was things, like, "You does are, she have a great relationship with her? Yeah, grandparents? her. They, they raised, raised her. her that, oh, okay. Because her her mom was." Off doing Even drugs, still, but still, wow, people are people. Are I'm good. like, wow, you're if there's heaven, you're going, God, you're no going. Kidding. I couldn't. I, I said, what was your grandma doing when you were doing that? And she was, saying, her grandma was going, oh, be careful, oh, be well, careful. Well, let's, yeah, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> that was my Alzheimer's story, wow. but that's just wild, huh? People are good. I know. And what about those hospice people not bathing her? They must not have bathed there well or that's forever. A long yeah, for a long time. Well, hey, that goes right into our our discussion the other day about the mailman, not the carrier, not doing his job. Mm. People don't do their jobs anymore. Yeah, but I'm sure. I mean, that is a hard job. But holy cow, good for uh, good for your friend. That's that's impressive. But holy, and Moses. and sheesh, sheesh. she has ants and stuff who are a she had to ants in her bush. No, no, no. My oh. friend <laughs> has. Older. I'm just kidding. I knew what you meant. <laughs> she has aunts who could be doing this, not wow. the grandchild. Wow, people are good. I, I don't. I I'm, don't I'm, know. I'm just. I'm emotional support. I'll be emotional support. 
I'm not good at that. I was, That's I was wild. just, I'm but, like, bring more wine. I got to keep hearing the story. That you was know what, crazy. Though? Maybe it is a case of, you know how like before you have kids, you're like, I am never changing a diaper. That's the most disgusting thing in the world. But the second you have kids, all of a sudden you're changing diapers. You're digging food out of their mouth and pulling snot out of their nose mm -hmm. and you you know that you, that you just kind of do that. I wonder if that's what happens as soon as you, because even when when my dad was sick, like and they had me over to shave his head, that was like the closest I had ever been to my dad. In my I was of my went see when my dad passed away. Well, anyway, I was in my late forties and I was you shaving were in his, your late forties. I'm, I'm sorry, my late thirties when he passed away, right? Well, anyway, when I was shaving his head with the shaver, that's I, only funny because you're forty five. Right. But I, but that even that was uncomfortable for me. <laughs> but I think that was more because that was the closest I'd ever really like been to. My yeah, she, she says she like plucks her oh, whiskers man. that grow out and stuff. But yeah, I guess my 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 question is, I guess maybe that's mm -hmm. what happens, you know, when you when when I you think have there to are really good people oh, out okay. there, and she might be one of them. Yeah. Wow. That is. I mean, that is really good. Good for her. <laughs> I I think I would have. I would. I would have. Yeah, I, no, no thanks. I know. I don't know what can I you, would do. Yeah, can you just call hospice and be like, hey, you guys are not cleaning I well. Can you come over here? I don't know. Is it just... a free service? I don't know. I don't know how it works. Hey, but... speaking of something that's also sort of, uh, I should have said it before. That's funny that you said that because my dad used to have dreads <laughs> on his mm -hmm. actual head. Yes, and they <laughs> and, weren't duty. Yeah, and I, that's not what I was shaving. It was when he, his, uh, this is his like 10th bout with cancer yeah what's the the chemo and he was he's hating what his hair was doing so hey uh when i was texting you what time this was happening mm -hmm. today um i was over i i could hear nolly listening to her phone just music off of her phone doing her school guess who she was listening to bikini kill dos effects i was like wait oh, wow i heard this hubba do you know Diddly, diddly, bum, skiddly, bum, skiddly, <laughs> bah. It's, it's, I'm like, are you <laughs> listening to DOS Effects? Wow. And she checked her phone. Yep. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, she's got good taste in music. She I was listening that to was Bikini way, Kill this morning yeah, when I heard. That was way random for her. Oh, yeah. She was also, I heard, when I was stretching for my run this morning, I heard her listening to um, TLC, too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Waterfalls. Yeah. No, I, I can't remember what song it was, but I was thinking, when I was younger, I would have, I think I... I was what I was embarrassed to listen to that music, or I didn't like it, or something. No, it's just like the Earth, Wind, and Fire. Of, oh my god! I, I think I mean for I them, loved Earth, Wind, and Fire, right? And they were not really relevant when you were when sixteen, I was, seventeen. I well, not to say that they're not relevant. No, no, no they, I know what you're saying. But yeah, my, that, my time, dad, yeah, their, their popularity time, had yeah, passed, but, so it's kind of the same. But my mom, dad, listened to Earth, Wind, and Fire, and a lot, and so yeah, I we heard it. I heard it a lot in the. At the house, but yeah, you're right. They, yeah, I guess, but I don't. But when TLC was out when I was younger, that's what I'm saying. I did not like that music. I didn't. I would have. I was like, it was pop music to me or something. But I was on a. I, it's not like I was listening to great music. I was listening to things like Gangster Nip, <laughs> which I still love to this day. <laughs> Gangster Nip, Spice One, MC Breed, some some like yeah. Those are my gang banging days. Uh, anyway, uh, you, anything else? Uh, the, well, I have, I'm really regretting that I asked that store the Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. <laughs> well, no, I you know I'm a visual person. Like I can't get that visual out of my head. Maybe it'll end up in a drawing. <laughs> no, and we can give it to oh, her. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, people freak out about my my Last Supper drawing. What if I? I mean, jeez. <laughs> I follow, well, maybe a part of a movie. Maybe you'll get back into movies one day, and that can be seen in a movie. I see. Uh, yeah, I plan on. I do plan on. I tell people often. I plan on getting back into the movie industry later in my later years. Um, yeah, there is a, a, a this artist that I f follow on Instagram. She does kind of wild drawings like that, where she could get away with something like that. She just came out with this whole series of like these really cool naked ant, like half animal, or maybe even not half animal, just like some pretty uh, wild stuff. And I'm surprised that it doesn't get. What is that thing that they do on Instagram? They Flagged? like I don't know. Flag it. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm kind of away, but I sound really loud in my headphones. Is it probably? 
it's probably because people complain about it to flag it or something. I don't know. You got me. I'm not on there all that often. Yeah. I, I will get on there occasionally, post some boring stuff and uh, leave. <clears throat> I look there's there's andy andy macklemore he's he's a you know he's a follower on instagram and he um comments a lot and and keeps up on on the on the show regularly he just a message just came through from him that says have you tried getting barfly on the show hmm. not yet i don't know he barfly. he's got some he always uh yeah asks to check out some people which is cool because i like to I like that. And that'll go into, so our guest today is, um, is Saeed, as you heard, um, M. Saeed, a.k.a. Saeed Airborne. Uh, he was, he's formerly in the group Anapop Anna Consortium. Uh, Consortium is such a cool word. Do you know what that means? Mm -mm. It's like a group of, of uh, like a group of people or, or businesses, consortium. Anyway, that, uh, I think that originally that group, Anapop Consortium, what? That's what my mom always says to me. She'll like throw out a big word. Do you know what that means? Well, I didn't know what it means. <laughs> I had looked, I mean, I had to look it up because I was like, what, what is that? What is, I mean, I've heard the word before. I didn't know what it was. So anyway, that's so that's uh, M. Saeed, um, High Priest, Beans and Blaze. So I came hip to Anapop Consortium when I, during my Napster days, when I was downloading na all the, that music off Napster. I mean, that's where I discovered most of my, my hip hop and, and underground hip hop outside of the NWA and Dr. Dre. And well, no, before this was pre Dr. Dre. Anyway, so I didn't, but I, I, the, I was getting post, that music. Post was Dr. That? Dre. Dr. Dre, the well, yeah, height of that not, was like 93. Oh, that's right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, because the chronic was 90. 91. Yeah. yeah, and when I was downloading Napster, we were dating, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I downloaded so much music, and I still have some of that music on CDs and stuff. Anyway, I'm not doing a Napster commercial. <laughs> but what my point was, I didn't know anything about the people, all that music that I was downloading at that time. So uh, I didn't realize uh, who it was. I just heard the name and I was into the music. And then so that turned out it was cool. Um, our One of our um, partners for the show, a sponsorship partner, Hands Made Collective, they're releasing his new album, Error Tape 2, uh, M. Saeed's album. And uh, we, I had been discussing with him, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, let's have him on the show. So I started doing a deep dive into him and then found out, oh, he used to be in um, Anapop Consortium, which is cool because I heard of them a long time ago. I just didn't know who was in the group. Okay, long story short. Because Napster didn't come with CD covers. Right. It didn't come with any information. It came with <laughs> someone had awesome music on their hard drive and you just saw, oh, they have this. This must be good. And just downloaded it like crazy. Or at least I did. I didn't have a job where I was... I was doing tattoos from home at the time. You so really I was have much of a in job. the basement a lot and I mean I spent like two months downloading music. Like literally just Yeah, I remember. I know. <laughs> I had a job. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, again, like I said, I didn't know anything about him. Uh later way post Napster when I was producing the TV show three point two percent. Mm-hmm. I was we had Saul Williams on the show and mm -hmm. I was interviewing Saul Williams. And one of the questions that I always want to ask any of our guests on the show, but I just, I always forget is, it's the question is, who, what music are you listening to? Who's, who's somebody that people should be, uh, you know, listening to? So I got to remember to do that. But I, on the interview, I was interviewing Saul Williams because sometimes I used to do the host duties. So I was interviewing Saul Williams and I was looking like a douchebag like usual because <laughs> I was a big Saul Williams fan. Anyway, I asked Saul Williams who he was listening to. And he had said Beans and Mike Ladd. I thought he said bike, Bus Driver as well. He did. He said he said Bus Driver, Beans, Mike Ladd, well, these people. Do you have a favorite MC? <laughs> uh, oh, 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 I know, I'm really digging out. Beans, Shock City Maverick album right now. These cats like Mike Ladd, Subtitle out of LA, Bus Driver out of LA. So I took that and I, I'm a, I became a huge bus driver fan, a huge Beans fan. Um, tried to be a, 
Mike Ladd fan. I don't know a whole lot about him. I don't even really know where I get access to his music. But I just I watched this live set with M. Saeed and Mike Ladd last night at the Murr Festival, music festival. It's, it's either Murr or M-I-R-R. And it it's like this 10-minute clip, and it was awesome. From Kingston to Johannesburg and Mumbai. From Aleppo straight to Lesbos, straight to Athens, straight to hell. Every microwave, everywhere we will run. So grab your sails and your cannons and shredders. For our help vessels and their burning in every shore. But I know we are righteous as we live with open arms. So I beg you, take a sit and get there more. Get there more. Out there, hang down. Hang down. Everybody. Hang down. Hang down. But just awesome. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, if you're you know listening and you're, and you're looking for something to kind of just look on on YouTube, I found it on YouTube. Check it out; it's really awesome. But anyway, yeah. So, is that awesome? It is awesome. I know I need to do a new word. Awesome's like my only word. But phenomenal sounds too something. I used to say phenomenal a lot. And no, Jeremy, you didn't. yeah, I did because Jeremy Nielsen once told me that we used to be my producing partner in movies. He said. Well, I like I like that you use the word phenomenal. <laughs> okay, so uh, what was interesting to me was again I didn't know anything about Beans pre Saul Williams telling me about me about him, but Beans was in Anapop Consortium with M. Said. I think that they've had they had some creative differences and um but i don't know it's not my not my story to tell not even one that i want to get into but i just bring that up because i thought it was interesting and um i, I want to try to do a deep dive into mike lad music i remember when i was having a conversation with maybe it was blockhead or somebody about mike lad somebody and it was and we were like oh, yeah i don't know a whole lot of his music but what i've heard i really like all right so i've been listening to error tape one that is Saeed's last album that I think came out in like 2019. It is phenomenal. Wow. He's elevated from the cars wow. and the tracks. Wow. It's all Cadillacs, wow. stretched out max. Wow. To the utmost when I wow. post on track. Shoot to the baseline, fuck wow. the back. Hospital, hospital wow. after the fact. Everything I lay on doc wow. on clap. Another track got habitats. Wow. Behind bars going zoo when I wow. cataracts. Glaze eyes and arrive with an wow. avalanche. Bandanas, news cameras, and extravagance. Wow. Start shooting and recruiting for the wow. presidents. Himalaya through the hate of how avalanche. Wow. See post three kids. Caravans wow. flying around in the air when I'm javelin wow. From the tongue like a gun when it's Babylon wow. Everyone ducking down like a Maryland wow. DC on the run with a cameraman wow. Easy when you're from all the Padeland Shit's freak in the streets are How's that? Mm -hmm. I really, really like it A lot I like Saeed's music a lot And I'm and I'm happy to I'm happy that he's going to be joining us on the show today And uh, let's see what we learn from him he, uh, you, I like quotes I never tell you that really I just like <laughs> I'm all over the place. That coffee, coffee before a show. I don't know. I do like qu quotes. I write them. I put them down in my phone a lot. Um, Are we gonna hear a bunch now? Nope. I'm just gonna tell you this one quote that I saw Saeed say, and I thought it was pretty awesome. And it is, he said about himself, "I'm a spirit having a human experience." <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I need a different word. What's another word for awesome? I don't have words. That's not my thing. You're it's the one. It's neat. You, you, all you do is talk to wordsmith. I know. I know. Don't ask me. I do have that in in one of my questions. I want to ask him. What's a good? <clears throat> ask awesome? my mom. She'll give you some mommy words, <laughs> and then she'll give you all the meanings too. <laughs> Uh, anything else you want to say before we take a quick break and then come back with um, with Saeed? Mm, not really. Do you want to hear a real quick story or should we take a break? Sure. You do want to hear a quick story? Sure. Okay. So we were just, you and I were just down in Miami or down in Florida and we went mm -hmm. to this really cool park 
and we saw like the closest alligator the closest i've been to an alligator mm. in a park mm -hmm. that alligator was really cool mm -hmm. um so we walked it was on a boardwalk do you remember what the name of that park was i know it doesn't matter but just off the top of your head that doesn't matter but it was somewhere near um what was that what's that area uh Tamp it was or kinda, just outside out uh, orlando right oh no a little bit yeah a little bit yeah. before orlando it was called it's john pierce park state park or something i don't know so we went to this boardwalk and we're walking we see this alligator it was really cool it was like right there see these pictures i'll show you in this video yeah uh so when we walk back to the we go out to a walk out on this boardwalk to the lake and then we come back and you use the restroom and i'm sitting there and there's this chalkboard a dry erase board in the area what would they call that area like the educational area educational area of this park and on the white draw the white dry erase board it says uh write down what you saw out there today you know out there in the park so there's a bunch of things turtle alligator blah 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 all those things and i don't know what got into me i'm like a child but <laughs> i grab the marker and i write tie <laughs> And as I'm writing it, someone comes out of the building, and, the, and I notice there's cameras. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I got all I got all uh, sketchy and put the marker down and walked away. And then I started feeling guilty or something. No one saw me. No one cared. There were just people in the educational center. So I went and erased my name off of there. <laughs> and I and it was just funny. It was funny to me because like no, it didn't matter. But for some reason, I have a guilty conscience. And I was getting ready to tell you the story, but I wanted to wait till we were on the show to tell you when it happened. When I was a kid, there's this place called Mr. G's. It was a gas station near our house in Utah. Uh, when I was growing up, I went in there and I stole a magazine. I stole a Gorezone magazine and a Fangora magazine. These two magazines. I slid them. I was probably 10. I slid them up my shirt and I, I went home and went into the garage uh, at my parents house and there's this little closet in the garage I went in there and I was looking at the magazine and and, I, and it really was a gore zone and, and fangor this sounds like a stole a playboy but they didn't have those at Mr. G's anyway I started feeling guilty <laughs> so I walked back to the gore, to the the mart what do you call it a gas convenience station store. And convenience store I walked back to the Mr. G's and I put them back <laughs> I don't know. I, I, what's the point? It didn't matter. I'm sure you stole plenty of things that you didn't put back no, after that, well, though. I, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I stole that hoppy top. Oh, uh, yeah. It yeah I think the better story was, didn't you tell me about you stole a cane? I did steal a cane. Like a walk. I've mentioned cane. that on the show. Yeah. At, from Tinderbox at the mall. Tinderbox is a place that sold cigars and canes and cool shit. Mm -hmm. Knickknacks and things. What are you looking at? What are you, what's going on? Oh. Uh, all right. Well, hey, let's uh, take a quick break, <laughs> and we'll be right back with Saeed. D-O-D-45. Hot sauce. We're real thrilled to have partnered with Hob Sauce for three simple reasons. Their hot sauce is delicious, the owner and creator David is a solid dude, and they collaborate with dope artists for their labels, including myself. Boom. Amplify your favorite foods with their award-winning flavors. Head over to hobsauces.com to get yourself some absolutely delicious artisan hot sauce. Hit it, Bobby. Have sauce, have sauce. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Put it on your food. Hot sauce. This is flyover country. No one's expecting much from us. In fact... No one's expecting anything at all. The coast probably think we're at Walmart right now. We are dealing on fire, by the way. <laughs> Instead, here we are making plans. Big plans. Because in a city where people do so much with so little, what could happen if we gave them more? More beauty, connections, perspectives. This is your chance to be a part of something bigger than itself. Something that's made of brick, concrete, and steel also for blood, sweat, and soul. Something that can only be possible in St. Louis. Because when no one's expecting much from you, you can do anything. 
Our city deserves something epic. Long live laborious. Check out our new partners, Brim of the World, a.k.a. Sea Conquer and Destroy, a.k.a. Aliens Built Earth. Show them some love and treat yourself right to a new wardrobe or some new headgear. And I'm not talking about braces headgear, I'm talking about hats. Check out all their gear and links at brimoftheworld.com. Hey, real quick, my friends, my art is available for purchase at artbytie.com. So if you like what you're seeing or you want to support the DOD 45 show, the best way for you to do that is to pick up a print or an original at my website. If you're not quite ready to buy, but you still want to help out, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you stream from. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel at Art by Ty and engage in the comments. That goes a long way. All right, enough already. Let's get back to the show. Yes, yes, yes. What's up, you guys? We're, we're yeah. here. We're live. We're here. Man. We're good. Yeah, it's good to hear you guys, man, across the across the seas, man. Some like minds. What's good, man? What's up? Uh, here's, what, here's what I do. I'll, I'll start because, I, you know, it's the DOD 45, so I do the 45 so, minutes so that we don't, so that, um, you know, we don't... Um, Rock, we rock within the context. Tom. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll start. <laughs> it doesn't go too far. Normally, I start this old school timer. I don't know. Can you see the drawing screen? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But I this love timer, it. this timer, um, shit the bed on me. So let me, let me tell you something, man. That timer was my life. Exactly the same color, and almost the same font. We had a timer in my kitchen. My mom yeah. used to always set the timer for at random stuff, and even like my homework. And yeah. so, like, the timer was just a way of me focusing. Like, put the timer on, finish your homework. The dinner will be ready when this thing goes off. So, yeah, I love, I this love is what this is. Timer. It's a kitchen. It's a kitchen timer. Yeah, and it, it helps me. It helps me stay focused. So I do a every day. I do a um, a one hour drawing. So I'll set the timer and I and I and then I'll draw for an hour. It keeps me. Uh, that keeps me, that's it. my exercise. I love it. I love but it. I, 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 I set it, but I will set the one on my phone just in case. Okay, yeah, just in case that one that gets weird. <laughs> I set my phone one. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I started cool. mine. All right, well, I'm going to start this drawing for you, and then I have some questions that I was going to throw at you. Perfect, man. Perfect. Hit me up. I had some requests, you know, f- to figure out what to draw for you because it's always, you know, something. You had some good... You had some good ones, like you said, black leaders and stuff. I, I, I would have attacked. I would have tried to do that, but like I would have never been able to do any justice for forty-five minutes. Yeah, no, 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 man. I, I just threw, I threw things out there that would just be more about the vibe of, of what I'm on. You know, the the periphery. I'm gonna go with the uh, Frankenberry and uh, Count Chocula. Count Chocula. <laughs> that, that's a good one to go for. <laughs> but there was something about that that made me like. It, is it just the cereal alone that you ate, like, or or why why does that come to mind for you? You know what you know what it is. It's it's illustration, uh-huh. and it, it, it's illustration, bright colors, and the and, and fantasy. Yeah, that, that meets you all the time in the morning, and it tastes really good. And yeah. so it's like all these things combined, all these senses combined in one thing. You know, give you this like. Uh, extraordinary feeling of uh, of life when you're eating these things when you're a kid, and I mean I remember like you know Count Chocolate is like it was it was it was a level up, you know. Yeah, it definitely was a level up from like <laughs> yeah cornflakes, cornflakes, and Special K, and you know all the health yeah. stuff you have to have, and all brand, you know. So so yeah, no, it was a level up, and uh, it was also and you can only get it once a year. Yeah, oh well, I mean, we yeah, Frankenberry, all that stuff was was it was never always around at the house. It was just spe- kind of special times because yeah. also too you can't you couldn't eat that every day. Oh, you could no, uh, yeah. no. I think way. we only <laughs> ever sold it near Halloween. Oh, really? Yeah, and, I feel, I feel and that's like, just, that's the case still. Yeah. Oh, you can't just get it regularly. Mm-hmm, no. Oh. Well, I did sense. not know that. that. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of we, sense. I, I've mentioned it on this show before, but I, my fa- my mom and dad, we never got that cereal. We never got good you sugar guys never cereal. Never got good ever. stuff. Never. I was mm-hmm. always the um, like, um, yeah, raisin bran or some oh, shit. Was it? Like, <laughs> yeah. We had the two. We had the raisin bran, and then we had cookie crunch, cookie crisp, 
cookie oh, crisp. Would you I remember never the cookies? Would have got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that would have never happened at my heavy house. Heavy <laughs> in my house. Heavy in my bowl, man. Fat yeah, I would want to go sleep over at my friends' house because I knew they had good cereal in the morning. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's funny, man. I get that. I get that. Hey, I was going to ask you because uh, why do you think as Americans were so intrigued with the idea of somebody moving to a different country from America. What, what do you At, think that is? You know what that is? That is the full cycle of the American dream, you know, which is landed Ellis Island, right? This is, this is from one standpoint, but it's also too like land, like like come up from the bottom, make, you know, make your mark, make your, 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 your money and your, your material wealth, and then extend that, that mm. money uh, to Europe, back to Europe, right? Right. Um, back to the academic institutions and the kind of uh, things that are heralded about Europe, uh, in particular, in particularly France, when it comes to kind of cooking and specialties in the kitchen and specialties in art and culture. So the way that you take it to the next level is not by kind of being at, at the Ivy Leagues, but that next step is to go back to kind of, you know, whatever, like Paris or, or, or yeah. Rome or somewhere and, and like, and, and have a mark there, you know? Yeah, I do. Or, or, I, or the I, kids be educated, be educated there in those institutions uh, some part of the year. Yeah, it is. To it is. Uh, yeah, it's, I. I just know that any time. I mean, we've been we've been a couple of times, but and I would. I love it. It's yeah. um, going to Europe in general is a whole other. But it was. Uh, it's just always interesting to me why we are as Americans. We're always so intrigued by. Oh, you you moved true. from the U.S. to a different place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially because every because because America is dope. I mean, for all of its you know for all of our. our issues i mean america is a spot america is the best country in the world so you know you, you you definitely um i mean look you have a certain level of opportunity you you exploit that and then you go to europe for the finer tuning and then yeah. you you come back but the thing about it is is it, it, it happens across lines like it happens across racial lines as well i mean usman sembe who's an amazing senegalese filmmaker you know was educated in france in the film in the kind of like the, the nouvelle vague or the, you know, the new wave of cinema and then brought it back to Senegal. So there, there's been many ways that people have, have gone to the bigger countries in Europe, like the Parises, the Romes, and then, right. and then made their mark and then returned back as, uh, as fully, fully made men and women, quote unquote. I put that in quotes, sure. right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's part of that trajectory and that energy. Um, yeah. But Beyond anything else, I mean, it doesn't matter where you are. You got to do the heavy lifting and the hard work. And whether you live, you know, because you live in Paris or because you live in London, isn't going to give you a pass when someone's listening to what you're doing or watching your work. It's got to be dope. Sure. Yeah. This say, I said yeah. It's the same with um, yeah, with the cr like creating visual arts. Like you can have all the tools, the best tools in the world, but if you don't grind it out it doesn't matter what tools you have you got to be able to yeah you got to make it <laughs> you got to you still got to make it happen it's still got to yeah. happen in order for you know what i mean yeah who did the 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 daytime talk show thing better maurice aka mari povich or montel williams man i mean well remember montel had a real deep story montel was about you know the tragedy of coming up as someone with a serious uh a serious health problem um, right so he was able to rock you by his own issues and then the issues of those on the show he was trying to solve whereas, yeah whereas maury was just like high school principal yo uh yo i don't know you guys do it <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so yeah that's, that's kind true. Of the two extremes from me <laughs> you know? that, that show was like a circus it was a disaster. Wasn't it like but Jerry Springer? It was kind of like a Jerry Springer, Springer sort no, of. It was yeah. the next level. It was the graduation yeah. after Springfield where you really <laughs> leaned in. You're like, you know what? I've seen this before, but this may be even worse. But yeah, it's the school, high school principal. So let's see what he has to say. And then you watch. You're like, oh, my God. My life is really <laughs> falling apart watching this right now. It's a waste of everything I've ever been. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. 
And now that's taken off in in American uh, television. That's like well, the- absolutely. I mean, it's, a, it, 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 it's what it's what we're it's what we get our juices from. I mean, it was that, and and now it's you know it's it's like whatever, man. I mean, you know, it was Maury and it was those, and then it was, and then now it's just direct insults yeah. that are that are captured. Or, well, and you know, it's like. 15 seconds in your face every 15 yeah. seconds oh, yeah, on, that's true. on reels yeah. or TikTok or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but think about this. Like, people don't even care about the live studio audience anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, you know, they do when they're watching, like, the bigger stuff, right? But as far as, like, the problems, like, it's not the no. same. You know, okay, yeah. everyone's watching your problems. You're explaining it to, you know, to, to Oprah or to who have you. You know, it's like, it's not the same era. Um, no. And it's just... It's, now it's, they just it's want funny, to watch your problems in their house, like with the housewives and all that. Like <laughs> that's crazy. it. That's <laughs> it. I can't. I've never watched any of them. I don't. I don't. I don't get off on that. But it is yeah. just surprising that that many people in the in the world really seem to uh, to enjoy that. I I don't. Oh no! I mean, but that's what's driving. I mean, think about it. I mean, it's like it's that's what's that's that's a it's a dopamine drive. Yeah. When, when, when you when you hear about like simple is like Kanye, right? It's right. like, yo, what? Oh my God! It's a, and then what? Do you, and then uh, you know, but it's driving. Even if it's negative, mm-hmm. it's still driving like a sensibility of like, oh really? And then what? Oh, my, and then you're having a conversation about it. So it, it it really is there to invoke emotion and and keep you engaged, and it works. It, it does, does work. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I guess. I guess the, it, it is about how people, why people do watch it. I find that a lot of people like to watch. As you you know, as you uh, brought up Kanye, I think people like to watch that because they like to see. I mean, that's it's an age old thing, but they like want they want to push somebody up to the top. But once they get to the top, they want to pull them back down. <laughs> I mean, the thing about it is, is that like they they even it, pull them back down is like is, is one side of, of of seeing it, but then like the other side of seeing it is like someone who like won't go down. Sure, and, and you're like, yo, nah, he, he's never gonna stop. Like, yeah, nah, and yeah. just watching the fact that, like, yeah, they they said two Billy is gone, but the the tweet was worth more. In yeah, the future, the true, tweet right? will be worth ten Billy. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, damn, yeah, he's got a point weird. about that. Okay, let's <laughs> watch even, more. That is just crazy. I don't even how you know how you can. Because you're saying like sell the tweet, right? Yeah, the tweet yeah. is gonna be worth more. How do you even? How is that even possible? Someone's to willing to buy it. Because <laughs> what, it's possible is because whether we like it or not, um, yeah, the idea for sale. Of, of intellectual pro- <laughs> intellectual property and and and, right. and tweets and things like that are at, do have a value. And, yeah. and, and 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 in the future, people will exploit the value of those things, and it will be worth something. Um, <laughs> and they will find a way to make it worth something. I mean, we we're, we're just at the beginning stages of NFT and stuff, you know. But yeah, there will be a time where something. that where that where that IP address attached to that tweet um, verifies that it's that individual, right. and then therefore it is whatever you say you want it to be. Wow. Price wise, um, yeah. What, uh, if you were if you were forced to follow this life the life path of either of these two people, okay, whose yeah. life path would you rather go with, Tom Green or Brian Austin Green? Brian Austin Green. Who's Brian Austin Green? He was in that TV show, um, uh, 90210? 90210, and I think he was he had a just like a small rap. Yeah, group, like, I he did that. some rapping. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I, I do remember now uh, a little bit about him. I, I would I would definitely always go with Tom Green because Tom. That's Green- funny. Now that I said that, because they both kind of did a little rap thing. Like Tom Green did some raps there for a little bit. Yeah, he did. <laughs> He did. I mean, I think that those guys, you know, what's funny is, is that it's funny about like art is that, you know, on one hand, people want to, they, they, they do, they, they, they do want to actually do it. Yeah. But sometimes. And then, and then like, but they are comedians. And so they'll figure out a way that they can do it and make it funny, but still do it and still feel yes. good about doing it. Sure. Which is kind of like the addiction of like creativity and creative things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I find that people like sometimes because my son, he's 15 and he makes yep. music. He makes really good music. Yep. But I find sometimes the music that he makes is with his friends, he kind of does it in a jokey manner because it, it's like a safety, you know, like you don't like, um, what am I trying to say? Like, yeah. you're less vulnerable. You're less vulnerable yeah, yeah, if you make it kind of like, oh, I'm just joking. I don't care. That Absolutely. It, you, yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
but also too, I mean, there, there's there's a lot of dimensions to not taking things seriously. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, and there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of value in it too. I mean, the BC yeah. Boys, they took oh, it yeah. to an art. They took not not being serious to an art form. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one that was like relevant, a dope mm -hmm. art form, and that like made sense intellectually also. You yes. know what I mean? So yeah, you could you could play with that a little bit. Yeah, like uh, even I kind of feel like even the Fat Boys were that way too. Like it was a uh, fun. They, uh, yeah, they were. I mean, I think if you if you look at like if you look at the Fat Boys, though, the Fat Boys were 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 um, less like the, the Fat Boys were more were more of a design that had to do with um, you know shock and television. Like whoa, television. Um, you remember like bloopers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like the Fat Boys were like to me, they they were about like playing with the bloopers. Oh, sure. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but still dope and still relevant and still everything. But the Beastie Boys were playing with like they were playing with like a lot of gray areas of culture, um, yeah. and intel like 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 intellectual kind of kind of stuff. Um, they they were really they were somewhere else with like not taking things too seriously. Yeah, I feel they, like yeah, I feel I, like, I agree. like Cookie Puss, right? That ten inch yeah. they put yeah. out mm -hmm. is is a masterpiece of art on not taking things seriously, right? Yeah, they call up Carvel. Yeah, it's so that's great. The <laughs> I want to speak to so Cookie Puss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah, that, they were, that were the Beastie Boys were were because um, I I we grew up. I grew up in Salt Lake City, so it was mostly a white um, area. But yep. my, my my family was is Samoan, so the, we were yep. brown family in in the, right. in a town. So, but I grew up in a culture where the, my introduction to hip hop music was through the Beastie Boys. I right. knew it was different, but it was it, it was like this weird like they were the white guys doing it, so it yeah. almost made it okay for that area for the you know this. But that's you know a long time ago. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. I mean that's what it was. I mean that's what it that's what they you know did not not on purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is another beautiful thing about America. I mean, yeah. there is nothing that they were they were not trying to do anything besides be them. Right. And they 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 murdered it. And they murdered it they for did. culture, they murdered it murdered it for art, they murdered it for a lot of things. And they paved not only paved the way, but they they just opened up a way of thinking that um a lot of people, a lot of people still today recognizes amazing marketing, yeah. amazing perspective. So great, yeah, it was so great. Hey, yeah. um, uh, twenty years from now, who will yes, be uh, who will be most known by the public, Al Green or Seth Green? <laughs> I don't. You know what? Seth Green is a name that I know, but it's it, he doesn't pop out. Yeah. Um, what can you refresh me on? What he? What he's he's, the, about? he's like the, so, Adrian. That was who you were thinking of, Adrian. I think he is the redheaded kid. That's yeah. the short. He's really short. He does. Um. He does a lot he's of movies. Actor. He's an actor. Uh, yeah. He's also a director. He does a uh, what's that MTV that uh, Adult Swim. He does a lot of Adult Swim. Does he? Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Um. Yeah, but I, I just think. I mean, I know Al. I this is when I was thinking of that. I thought Al Green was dead for some reason, but he's not. No, well, I mean, it's easy to think, you know, that that guys who are really invisible to our eye in the media are not around yeah. anymore. Um, and 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 adding weight to what your question is, like, it's like, yeah, I mean, who will be around in the future in twenty years? You know, is is really just a, it's it's a little bit of context. So, uh. Seth Green does. Seth Green is a is is an entertainer. He's he's a good yeah. actor. Yeah, yeah. So if you're in that universe of what makes him great, then he's going to be super relevant. And if you're, if but if you're you know if you're with your girl, man, and, and you guys are just it's, it's whatever you know, Al is going to be. So let's go with Al. We're going to go with Al on that one, man. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, because I was the, I, what my thinking on that was twenty years from now, the music. I'm wondering how much change will there be to music that will people. Like I was, I was thinking of this. Like you, there are people who don't know who Elvis is, which, oh, which is like definitely. it's crazy. You know, that's just wild to me. But dude, there's people who don't even know who Biggie is, man. Yeah, that's true. I mean, come yeah. on, you guys. Like so many people don't know who Biggie. You know what I mean? 
It's like, whoa. <laughs> You'll hear what? Al Green even in samples in 20 years. In 20 years. Seth Green. Okay. I don't know how relevant yeah. those 80s, 90s shows would be. Well, yeah. I would... Unless you are someone who's like about that and like mm-hmm. trying to yeah, research it and you're going nostalgic and you're, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, and, or his comedy just try, really yeah. hits for that era. You know what I mean? Yeah, because that's what it is. It's always, a, it's always like the recycling of. It's like now it's hip for kids to dress. Well, it was the eighties last a few years ago. Now what is it, Adrian? Ninety. You know? Well, I don't know. Now it's, it's ninety. Older. I mean, my daughter, those guys. Oh man, ninety. I mean, yeah. they, <laughs> they, it's like you guys, man. But the thing about it is, what's funny is that twenty years ago, yo, the time errors are like funny because twenty years ago people were rapping at a high level, right? You know, people were making art at a high level. They were making it at the best level. When when did Eminem's album? I mean, when did you know about 20, 20, years 20 years ago? Years ago. Was 20 yeah. years, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. When did you know you know big in ninety seven? I mean, when we're talking about like great pieces that are recognized mm-hmm. by populations, you know, twenty years ago for, for, for rap music was still really the, the bar was high. Yeah. Uh, twenty years from now. Where will things be, man? I know. I don't know. It's, no. it's yeah. It's, yeah. I remember. I remember growing up, and I'm like, we'd be listening to to. Um, I'd be listening to Led Zeppelin, and my parents yeah. would be like, "What the hell? Why are you guys listening to that? That's like from my era, you know." Like just I, I was like doing that. the same thing. <laughs> I was listening, you know, to Jimmy and and Led Zeppelin and yeah. Asia and all of that stuff from the seventies. You know, as I was a kid, obviously of the of the seventies, I was young in the seventies, but I was a kid in the seventies. And, uh, you know, I mean, the only thing you can say is, is that songwriting and, and, and production was in a place where it was the beginning of these of, of this experience of rock music. So, yeah. you, ha- you know, you, you just had an open door to do a lot of things and people people took it to the top flight on all those levels. And then obviously there wasn't really it wasn't a lot you could go. You could make another Zeppelin album. I mean, if you were coming up, you know, in that era, it would be like, damn, well, they they cut, they mastered that. What else right. can I do? So, I feel like the kids of all of the Zeppelins and all of all the Hendrix stuff and all the stuff that was really well made as far as like analog so- songwriting, I feel like yeah. they they were inspired to make hip hop. Some of them were inspired to make alternative and punk, but they made it a, a, an amazing. The transfer was amazing. Like the transfer between those eras and the quality of music was incredible. So, is there growth? Is there a room for growth for music now? Man, there's more growth for music now than there's ever been. As there's always been yeah. growth, you know, a lot of growth for music. I mean, absolutely. You know, the thing we're trying to figure out is, um, is like, okay, there's synthesized sound. Mm-hmm. This, a, synth- a synthesizer can make well can another machine make another kind of sound right that's what i'm yeah because yeah because that's that's to me is so intriguing because that, that's the thing yeah before hip-hop ever came or 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 even let's say like before the key um, keyboards were introduced like through the who or like any before any of that was introduced to music you'd never heard it before you never heard so, of Moog. yeah you never it would yeah, and then you hear it like what trip. So that's yeah, that's what I, we there's stuff that we don't even know. That's the thing, and and, and I it's think gonna that, come out right. New sounds are really what's yeah. gonna help. I think that, that that's gonna be the, the 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 real thing. So we have to look for like where the new sounds coming from right now, and and the people with the newest kind of sounds and approach to that could yeah. give you some glimpses of what of what could be possible in the future. I will say without question that um. When you hear the silence before an eight oh eight drop, right, it's powerful. Yeah, it's and it's that's something that we're just experiencing over the last seven years, right? Is that yeah. silence and then that deep eight oh eight drop that like really bodies it? So that's yes. something that's that's something that's kind of new, right? Right. I mean, so then you know, but there'll be things like that that'll happen, and then all of a sudden you'll be in a genre. 20 years from now yeah don't that's know, good right? I'm, I'm happy to hear that because i yeah i'm i know there is i just sometimes i i as i get a little older i get a little yeah. more jaded <laughs> i start going like oh man maybe we're not going anywhere <laughs> yeah well you know you know what happens is is that like the way that we experiencing experience things in different parts of our life 
affect our emotional connection to them. So my emotional connection to certain things is based on, you know, like De La La Soul is dead. Rest in peace, True Goy. Absolutely life changing. And an album that I didn't like at first. Sure. But yeah. Turned yeah. around to be the most incredible piece of art that like hit me at that age that like really had a lot of, you know, did did everything to change who I was. So yes. I think that you can mix a little bit of that in with with age and time, but you can also just say, yo, man, this this person did something that gave me an experience that like and after that. You know, things weren't the same. And as I reach back to look for things being like that first feeling, I don't yeah. feel it. Mm-mm. Right. You know what I mean? And, and and that's that's okay because that's how life actually is. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? so, uh, with that with that thought, do you think it might maybe I gotta change my attitude? Maybe it's the way you, that, yeah, we see you it. say maybe the way you're seeking music now, you should Absolutely. probably change. Because we're waiting for that dopamine impact a lot yeah. of times that that, that may come in a drip. Remember, there's, there's certain things that we first heard that we were like, huh, I know Freestyle Fellowship was the same way with me. I was like, man, it's, uh, uh, there's, uh, yeah, it's thin. I was like, ah. Yeah. Like, and then I was like, listen, uh, then it evolves on bang. Inner City yeah. Griots, bang, whoa. Yeah. You know, Delsa was dead, bang. So I think that, you know, we just keep out, keep fishing out there that, nah, the inspiration and that those experiences are there. And, uh, you know, obviously we just have to like fish, but it will come. There will be right. little, those, those moments can, will continue to come. Every individual is also always evolving and changing and emotions are changing. Absolutely. And so yeah. what you hear and how it hits you today is all, everything has to line up in order for that to happen. Well, I, yeah, that was just, I was thinking <laughs> that like when you're younger, you're so impressionable, or at least I was. And so I felt like I was, I was a little more open to taking on new musics, new sounds. But yeah. then as you get older, I'm a little less impressionable. I become more comfortable with the things that I like. I think yeah. I know what I like. And so it, it makes, Natural. I find personally, it's harder for me to, take on new sounds but yeah. I, I'm, I'm way open to it i want it i, I know i want it but. well i mean i think that like we all go through like all right checklist where is it yeah. coming from are they relevant when did it who uh, right. and so you know a lot of that starts there and so it's like when our first initial judgment of when it's coming from where it's coming from if we, as long as we stay open we can, yeah. and, and we have to like actually like try to stay open, which is different. But you have to like push the doors open, and then slowly you'll feel the energy of that of what they're trying to do. And then as as you like zoom out, you'll be like, wait a minute, no, 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 this is actually different. I jumped yeah. on it at first, but no, 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 no. there. Okay, now now I get it. Okay, dope. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good experience. You know, and this is the Philly dudes. The Philly dudes got me on that. Like, the Philly rappers, they really got me um, on that. Like, hold on, who is that? What? Oh, yeah. okay. They're going right. like that. All right, cool. I, I get it. I get it, and it's inspiring and, you know, dope. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so um, uh, you – so – was Error Tape your last full album release? Yeah, Error Tape yeah. 1 was my last one. I'm about to drop Error Tape 2. Yeah, that's and, what I was getting to. So, yep. yeah, so you have part, uh, Error Tape 2 coming out. Yep, Error Tape 2 is coming. Icicle Toes is going to be the, one of the singles. And, um, nah, man, I mean, I think that, you know, it's it's all the things we're talking about right now. It's how, I'm, it, uh, it's how I'm synthesizing. Sure. Everything we're talking about right now is how I'm synthesizing through for for error tape too 100 percent. is it is it already is it uh all all recorded and now being uh mastered or is it, yep. is it done? exactly cool. it's, it's all recorded it's, it's just now just being like finalized mastered and put in the can but yeah. it's definitely finished up i'm stoked to do it and you know i'm not mad that it took the time it took um you know that's one of the cool things is that I I don't have a I don't feel the pressure of t- of time and like hurrying up on on like oh right. yo it's got to like nah this one had to be what it had to take the time it took 
And I, I'm not mad at that. And um, now it's now it's ready, and we're gonna drop. And you know what's cool is 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 being in a space where dropping is not scary. Sure. You know what I mean? Dropping is not like, oh, hi, yo, I'm about to drop. Yo, this shit better. You know what I mean? Like, nah, yeah. man. Like, you know, you drop because this is the beginning of a, of a bunch of new material I'm going to continue to release on a regular basis. I have oh, cool. the, the the resources and the, and, the, and, and, and the kind of the team built together to be able to release. And so I'm going to be releasing multiple things. Um, Airtape, Airtape 2 is the beginning of that, that, that kind of thing. And, yeah. uh, you know, what's nice is if, if you're around long enough, you can you can focus on your craft and yeah. you can not have to worry about so much expectation, but just kind of have that expectation pointed in your direction on what you expect from yourself when you when you do what you do. So because yeah. we can't control anything that's outside of us beside, you know, kind of how how well we do with ourselves. So. Well, and then when, yeah, when you've already, I mean, you've had your, like, you've had a, a your level of success with the music that you made. Like when you're mm -hmm. younger, you're, you're like, when you're, you're right. first trying to make it, you're, right. you're like so concerned about, oh, will I make it? Will I, will yes, this? Sir. And then as you start getting a little older, you're like, yeah, I'm, 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 I made my spot. Now I can focus on the music that I want to make. Yeah, right. De yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, I think that it's a little more complex than that, though. I think it's more sure. like, yo, um, I. I you know, for I gotta be, I, she's gotta be hot. I gotta be like dope on my on my words, whatever that may be. Like I gotta be nice with that. Yeah, those things have to be locked in, and those things take a minute. And for everyone, it's different. But I know for me, you know what I'm saying. Like pushing the envelope, having my bars where I want them to want want them to be, and being able to like have everything ready for a live. Um, you know, it it took a certain amount of time. But I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, finishing up, moving forward, that this is this is going to be like, you know, something, something as a first step for me. You know, yeah. it's really just I, I look at it really as a first step. Um, but yeah, so that, I hope that answers a little bit. Yeah, of your yeah, question on yeah, that. for sure. Yeah. Well, um, what what are the major what are the major differences with um, error two that we'll that we'll notice from error one? I mean, you know what? You, you guys are probably able to. It's probably just the time era. You know, we were in the yeah. 17s when we were doing uh, era tape one. It was the 17s, the 18s. So life was post Trump. I dropped the era tape one in December 2018. Oh, December. Oh, December 2017, January 2018. Oh yeah, so that was right at it the was start. In the middle, in the middle, of, in the middle of, yeah. of right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and and this happened after COVID, and in a in a different place for me, um, being in being in France as well. Yeah. You know, so we, we we'll uh, um, so as listeners, you'll feel that like you will feel that uh, we'll be able to feel that that's that'll be a, a, a palpable feeling from the what we're gonna hear out of uh, the era tape too. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely. You know what? I, I tell you, man. In terms of what, I'm just gonna move, close the door real quick. Um, in terms of what, uh, what you guys are gonna feel or, or what have you, I, I I wouldn't be able to know that. But what I what I can say is, I just tried to I tried to make the joints like, yo, if I'm gonna sell somebody something, I want to make sure it's worth it <laughs> for them. So I'm just gonna try to do it so you guys feel like it's worth the money, whatever you know that you pay for it. And then let the rest of the thing kind of be what it is. Um, I, I think that it, it's heavy on being in the pocket and being experimental at the same time, um, which is kind of what 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 I've been doing for a minute. So so that feels good. Um, it it comes at a time where um, me and my guys with APC are are really good friends, and we we've like we've really made amends and we we rebuilt our relationships. Oh wow, you're cool. Uh, yeah, and so that's pretty magnetic. Um, so, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's it's a really good time, man. I, I feel like you know, I really deeply feel like, and I know this sounds crazy, but I I really feel like it's eighty eight. You know, I feel like it's there's something around the corner. I feel an energy out here. I feel like you know, all of us are on our kind of DIY independent swag. Are, are, mm -hmm. are leaning in, you know, and, and, and developing and doing our thing now. And I think a lot of the, 
the anxiety that happened with Webb um, in in like the 2015s and 16s and 17s in terms of like, yo, who's following and what, like all of that stuff is kind of burned off. And now we're like in a very sober space and it, it just feels good to be in that space now digitally. You know what I mean? You don't have to prove as much. It's like, yo, it is what it is. Let's rock. Let's mm-hmm. work. Yeah, that yeah that I get that probably was uh, due to the like the pandemic. Like people are Definitely. sort of like, wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, what matters in life? Definitely. Yeah, that's good. Well, it uh, is. Hey, uh, who who would you rather yeah. write music with, Billy Crystal or Billy Joel? Oh man, you don't even know, man. I mean, come <laughs> on. I mean, listen, man, and 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 props to Billy Crystal for for. Oh my God, for a lot of laughs. But I mean, of course, like Billy Joel played on my record player when I was a little kid, put me to sleep. Glass, the Glass Houses album would put me to sleep. Yeah. When I was a little kid, you know, I put it on and I'd fall asleep listening to it. Uh, an incredible, incredible writer, period, point blank. Do you know that he doesn't make, he's not interested in making any new music? Is that surprising to you at all? Or nah, it- it's not. It's not, it's not at all because, you know, like after, you know, you, 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 you know, you fulfill what you, you do with all the hottest joints you want to do, you do. And then you get to be a certain, in a certain space of time in your life. And, and those decisions you make are based on, you know, your experience, you know what I yeah. mean? And, and like, got to give, you know, hats off to them. Madison Square Garden multiple times. Yeah. I mean, hats off to them. Basically the soundtrack of NYC. So if whatever he decides to do, if he's like, yo, you know what? Let me stop. I, I don't want to kill myself because I feel like I will if I try to make something new. Let me fall back. I, I'm not mad at that, really, because I know his songs are so if strong. If you know what you want, if you know what you're also, good too, to do. Also, too, you can play yeah. the joints right now and he can <laughs> play it again. <laughs> just to, yo, still, it still shuts everything down. So he could just play those joints and everyone is still... Big up the party, big up the zone. Well, yeah, some a lot of people that I respect um, often say, if you got joints, just play your joints. I mean, I, artistically, some people want to like try something new, but like when people go to your shows, you know, if you play, if you play the joints, because that's, that's what it, man. <laughs> exactly. Like, we, like that's why people, are, you know what I mean? They're there to hear the joints that they, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it's cool. That's funny. Yeah, it's true. My kids wanted me to ask you this. Oh, <laughs> wow, kind of cool. Funny. Yeah. It's a, it's a crazy one, but who are better, the Dutch or the Danish? <laughs> who are better? Did they say better or worse? They said they said worse, but I changed it to better because better. I'm half Dutch. I'm half Dutch and Adrian's actually got some Danish in her. So. Okay, so you have to Yeah, well, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't like well, you could tell the kids, the little ones of which I know very well about little ones. They're not little. <laughs> well, they're 16. Uh, they're 16. They're 17, okay, they're older. I know about them. 1715. Okay, okay I, I know that. I cover that that range as well. Um <laughs> You tell them that you you tell them that they're, they're they're both incredibly dynamic places and they're both incredible builders. Yeah, that's what we say. You know, I mean, yeah, is, is well, that what yeah, you guys are saying? You guys are pushing well, that. Well, we and we also thing? there are also the the Dutch pretty much dominated the world, and I aren't I'm pretty sure they're responsible for the uh, the slave trade and all of that. So they had some, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, not, you know, on a, not on the ra- not on a racial slave. Tra- I mean, on yeah. actual slave trading, like they were a. Uh, um, but so were the Danish. So were the Romans. So were the Spanish. So were the yeah, Germans. I guess, the Franks. Yeah. The I think that's why the kids said we were the worst. Who, yeah, who, who were the worst? These guys are that guy. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about an era where people were brought from Africa to work for free. Right. And yeah. it was a right. piece of technology that Europe had, and they yeah. they exploited that technology and they made free labor. And, and then and then we didn't we never took care of like the, the deep 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 traumas that come with that. Right, and right. So, those are still real fresh. Yeah, yeah. and I so mean, now even- we're dealing with you know that and, and, and you know that that whole thing, which is like you know the trauma that that a peoples deal with after after many years. Um, and it comes out in so many different ways and so many different variations. Um, whether you're in New Caledonia, I have a client. New Caledonia is on the other side of the earth and the Kanak people were actually going through something with the French that colonized this small island in the South Pacific, you know? So yeah, major, you know, so, you know, there's a period of time where people were, were, were using technology to, 
make people do things for free <laughs> yeah. and go in places. Oh, I just discovered this. Well, I've got this bigger thing. So yeah, what we got to do now is just, yeah, is we got to put things in places, institutions, you know, pop-ups, whatever we may, may have in, in certain neighborhoods, in certain areas so that people can, we can start to deal with some of this trauma. Yeah. And uh, we can, what we'll realize what the benefit society is, is that we'll actually have, an amazing amount of people who can contribute to society and and transform our American culture. What we got to yeah. do is we got to get in there, get some folks some help on some trauma, as well as delivering like some 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 definite education stuff, but like you know skills and stuff and and good vibes. Remember, you guys, man. Like, you know, we've got like happy neighbors or people who come by and deliver you like, but that can, these things can happen. You can put people in neighborhoods that are task forces that are there for the well being of people. Yeah. It's right. not that hard. You guys. Yeah. It just needs so to that, be something. Yeah. It's gotta be the first action. Yeah. To do we it. just need these kind of task force to be able and to kind just, of. You also need to accept, but we need to, as a society here, yeah. I feel like that we need yeah. to just accept that that was our wrongdoing and, and face it head on. I guess like yeah. uh, after the apartheid in South, after reading Trevor Noah's book in South yeah. Africa, yeah, um, they just like kind of acknowledged it, played with it, laughed about it, and apparently things got a lot better quicker. They realized, okay, but I don't know how it is now, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, no, but I, like I what think we that, that's a start. I mean, absolutely, at one hundred percent. And I mean, you know, once once we have. Once we have um, the media that's able to like accept it, because like accepting things is, you know, it's like, well, will this guy from Houston, Texas, who votes right, accept that, you know, these folks, black people, do you know, have 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 this kind of culture? They 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 enjoy these certain things. It's it's really kind of neighborhood things too. Like yeah. yo, know, at school, yo, when it's when it's when it's uh, 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 something about Black history or something like, yo, bring in the clothing, bring in the yeah. food, bring in some of the things. Let's continue to share our cultures, and that mm -hmm. also works as well. I mean, we've you know, yeah, you, people aren't exposed to it. Some people just ex aren't exposed to it, and when you don't understand different things, exactly, that's where the fear comes from. Of it, exactly, he's opening opening things up so people can. People can can uh, can see how other people live and see how other people yeah. do things. People aren't stupid, and that's yeah. the main thing: is people are really not stupid. You take the most right wing person living in the middle of wherever; he's not stupid. Right. You put him in a situation and show him some things. Then, when he's at the light or he's at the gas station, he sees folk. He sees things differently. Yep. When you know, we're all on TV. We're all on all these media. It's funny because now we're in some ways closer than ever based on technology, but based on like interests, like, man, like a lot of people like the Lakers, homie, like a lot sure. of different cultures, yeah. you know? And, and, you know, the idea is that we want to be able to, to continue to, you know, expose people to culture in a way that, you know, will make them on both sides of the fence say, yo, you know what? That's what they do in that culture. You know, and yep. that's you know, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I one hundred percent agree with that. I mean, that's how you do it. If someone's in Japan, you don't. Be, you're not like, yo, why is he? No, he's from Japan. Like he's from yeah, a different exactly. culture. Why is he taking like, off yeah. his shoes when he yeah, comes? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. What um uh on a oh, I love that. That's great. Yeah, you because that's the that's the uh, yeah. the arch at the Greenwich Village so in Paris, dope. and that since is it's so dope, I love since it. you're from both, right? Like, yeah, you know, like, one, so squeeze them both I in there. Love that. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not the arch. That. That. No, the that's Triumph too. Or whatever yes. it's called. No, this is no, the that, arch that's, in Greenwich that's Village. The one too. In Greenwich Village, in, like oh, in okay. like, West Fourth. Yeah, it's Greenwich Village. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When I was fourteen, fifteen, and and I was in, I was you know a kid a, a young teenager i was just like i would go to washington square park yeah and when you went to washington square park man you saw everything yeah the, you know the comedians that were the 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 guys who were coming up in the ranks for snl you would yeah. see madonna you could see basquiat 
you could yeah, see. Yeah, how great is that? <laughs> man, you could see everybody at Washington Square on a, on a Saturday, on a, on a warm day. It was so dynamic. Skaters. I mean, I was in the BMX oh, yeah. scene, so it was like the skate in the BMX scene. We had our circle. We were riding hard. Do you still ride uh, a lot? Or You know what? I got back into it. I'm back into riding. I'm nice. back into Flatland. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and, and, and even... Like to the point where I'm like, am I going too far with this in my mind? Like, it's not back in the day, dog. But do you feel like you? Because <laughs> I get on my skateboard and I'll, I'll, I'm like, well, I'm 45 now, so like, yep. but, um, it. I think I can do these things, and I real and I actually physically just can't anymore. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know what? You know what, man? I it, so for all the OGs who want to come back to the game, you can totally come back to the game. But sure. that that kind of thinking. Is 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 like what I dealt with too, and now I've 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 lessened it, and I'm getting doper at my riding. Right, right, and, and I, I really know that the mental part is a huge part. Just to continue with what that 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 statement is, is that thank you. Is that when you guys go online, you start to see who's killing it. You can see some old OGs really skating incredibly well. Yeah, we and, had Ron. Al we had Ron Allen on. He's sixty-one oh, years old. Ron and Allen he's is sick. still shredding. Ron Allen is <laughs> I just saw a video, Ron. Exactly. So you're forty-five in ten years. Fifty-five, you man. If you roll yeah, all the time, you could be yeah. you could be really good. If you stay in the gym and just stay flexible, and oh, like, you know what that's I mean. That's the problem. It's the flexibility. <laughs> well, it was just the, like the injuries. They I, seem to hurt a little more. <laughs> that's why I'm doing flatland. That's why I'm not riding the street. I'm riding flatland. Yeah. <laughs> Wanna, while I while I have you on this time, just went off, but I want to wrap up with a couple of few like yeah, a, a few sure. little the staple things. But I did want to I want to ask this question to yeah. Adrian real quick while you're oh, here. Yeah, one hundred. Which which director had Saeed in their movie, Luke Basson or Letitia Masson? I would say Luke. I don't um, know either. Am yeah. I wrong? <laughs> you are. You are wrong. Know. But <laughs> so there's a there's a there's a really funny joke in every two, when you have these French tutorials on how to speak French. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have a thing, and it's like, uh, say, who was at the party? Uh, Luc Besson. Luc Besson. Right. Luc Besson. <laughs> Luke Luke yeah, Luke Luke <laughs> So that's the thing. Um, Letitia Mason is an incredible woman. She's she's an independent yeah. filmmaker. She's been in here at Paris since '92, making incredible independent films. Um, and uh, she has me in her films. She asks yeah. me to come, and she she gives me little parts, and I and I get it, get in there, and, and I do what she asks me to do. Um, and I contribute some music sometimes. And oh, cool. she's just she's a really really. Uh, dynamic person with yo the level of work ethic you guys oh, this woman good. has is so like she's writing films that go to the screen 18 months sometimes next to each other Ooh. sometimes she'll go a little bit of a lap but man like the last 18 months wow. fully wrapped next thing 18 months fully wow. wrapped fully oh, visualized I love that. like dope shooting really well designed like very classy, great stories. Yeah, Letitia Mason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that. I love good out. work ethic. Yeah, yeah I saw you, you posted that you were you were in a, the one the clip I, I saw a clip was I don't remember what the name of the movie was. Um, so there was a film that I was involved in really quickly. I'll tell you really. Its name is Aura, and it was with Letitia Mason and um, Elodie Boucher. Elodie Pouche is a, is, is a well-known French actress from the 90s. And then she continued on. She's actually the wife of Thomas Bangletere, um mm -hmm. from Daft Punk. And, oh. um, yep, that's uh, Elodie Boucher. And now she's come, she's come back. She's back in the game in France. She, her face is back in the game. She, nice. she went through a long period of not kind of being around, and now she's back. So doing some dope things. So big up to her. And uh, yeah, big up again to Letitia Mason, an independent film in France that's uh, really well funded and, and you know taken care of, heralded, and uh, that's what my wife does as well. So oh, we're oh inside so of is, there, cinema. is there is there more acting in your career in the future, or is that some... I, I'm you know what you guys be be one hundred percent honest with you like uh, if a scenar when scenarios happen you know and and, yeah. and it makes sense then cool. Sure. Um, I, I, other than that, I, I'm not pursuing anything. 
you know, yeah. but it's cool when scenarios happen and it makes sense. And I'll, I'll yeah. hop in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I totally get that. Yeah. All right, let me get the, the, cause the, some of the staples that we missed out on, there's, I'd give a useless fact. And since you're in France, I figured I'd give a useless fact about France and a useless fact about Paris cool. while we're here. Hopefully, hopefully people can learn when they're uh, uh, watching our show. Uh, uh, it's estimated that about 25,000 tons of snails are consumed in France on an annual basis. Absolutely. So they literally, literally eat snails by the tons. Yes, <laughs> that's <laughs> true. That's actually true. And then here's your fact about Paris. Uh, the very first Bloody Mary was made in Paris. Hmm. So there, yeah, there's wow. the <laughs> I wonder who Mary was. That's, I don't know. That, yeah. Yeah, that, that's 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 cool though. I mean, that's good to know. I mean, all these little, all these little little facts, right? I mean, yeah. that you know, when you talk about the snails, you're talking about you know, aperitif, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you know, French aperitif at the highest level, where you you don't just eat it and then you're full. Tasting and eating things, tasting things, yeah. Like we, I, I didn't even know. I, I, I see, and still to this day, like I, you know, I'm like. Did you learn that from I'm when you starving. moved to France about like actually like tasting the food that you're eating, or or was that something was, that was coming all up here, later? all France? Yeah. I would never, and even now, I, I, I don't do it amazingly. I, I halfway taste, halfway fill. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And if it's not, you know, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not amazing at it. But they have a lifestyle that that is all about just tasting and not about, you know, indulging too much. And it plays itself out at night on Fridays. You see people come out of bars and come out of clubs on Fridays in Paris. That's one thing. You see them come out of bars and, 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 and parties in London, man. It's a yeah. whole nother thing. <laughs> it's a yeah. really a whole nother thing. That's, you know, right. So, so yeah, there, there is a there is a, a an art to just taking a little bit, and that's what they're all about: sipping and just taking a little bit. Yeah, uh, enjoying it rather than yeah, yeah, they're, or, they're, big, yeah. On, they're big on that. We need to be better at that. I think as as Americans in general, yeah. I just no, but it's food. hard. But here's the thing: but our food is so good, man. I mean, there's some stuff where you can't just touch it, man. You gotta eat it, man. Like yeah. we're the best country in the world. I, I'll still say it. You know, despite all of our darkness, we are the greatest sure. country in the world. And you know, um, I'm here because of it. And man, I'm I really do miss so much. What food. are you when you, um, yeah, on that while well, we're wrapping this Mexican up, Mexican food, yep, yeah, yep. Or, or, yeah. <laughs> what will, will you be touring that? Will you there you be doing some touring with the era too, or, yeah, or yeah, not? Yeah, I'm gonna be doing yeah. dates, I'm gonna be doing oh, some cool. dates, man. Definitely doing dates, um, definitely like dates um, in the U.S. Dates in the U.S. I'm starting yeah, out my whole everything is starting back in the U.S. We're starting oh, in Seattle, yeah. Oakland, the Bay, and we're staying in America. You know, oh, cool. um, yeah, I'll be mostly in America. You know, we'll do what we can do here. It's great, but home is home. So yeah, my, me and my guys and my crew and everything, we're we're keeping everything focused uh, over in America. Shout out to Zach Caston, handmade, you know, really, uh, really, really instrumental in everything that I'm involved in. And uh, just a big pleasure to be, uh, you know, back home. And, you know, even though if I'm, I'm in Paris, but being move, making my moves back home and, and, and yeah. keeping the focus back home. So, so how will we um, before I get the yep. wrap up the philosophical question? How will how how do you what's the best way for people to um, uh, un, to hear what's when the touring is going to happen when the yeah, album is going to we're going to feel because yeah um and and just just as a note to everybody out there guys uh, just as a uh, note I I I'm not as much I, I just not on social media sure I, I, I you know just not on it but but when there's something to 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 rock from my from my people. It's going to be, you know, I'm going to let everybody know. Everybody's going to know. And okay. a friend of a friend will know. You know what I mean? And we're going to yeah. move like that. Um, I will, of course, be involved in in, in, in promoting and doing the thing. Um, but right now, I, I, I'm just I'm just not on it right now. Sure. You know what I mean? So when we begin to diffuse it and launch, I'll be I'll be popping. It'll be there, somewhere on the know. socials. Yeah, it'll be on the okay. socials and stuff. So it'll be all good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then uh, the last uh, one of the questions that great I great questions by the way, great conversation myself. with you guys. Yeah, uh, we, uh, the whole our show is always just about conversation because that's how you get Love to learn it. about people. So it great. doesn't always have to be directed to anything, but some sort of conversation is yeah, how I learn who people I like and what and things I want to know. The yeah. one question I was bringing up, I think it was in your intro or something. 
that I forget to ask people that I always want to ask people because this is how I found out about you and your yeah. music. Well, I actually found out from Napster days because I I didn't know who was in Anipop Consortium. I just <laughs> oh, listened to Anipop, but I didn't know who it was, like who it was yeah. back then. You know? I was yeah. just downloading music. <laughs> wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. um, but my question is, I need to ask everybody: Who are we? Oh, well, let me just do two of them. Who are we missing out on being an American music wise? Who are we missing out from? Fr- like maybe a French rapper or someone music there. Yeah. Who would? Who are someone that we should be knowing that we're actually missing out on? Is you have anybody? Yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah, who will it be? Who should we be checking out? It's 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 this one. His his name is uh. We put it, maybe put it in the show notes after this. Yeah, okay. Jock Joachim Joachim. Okay, okay, and it may be hard to find if you can find him on YouTube. Yeah, but if you can find him, yo, it's murder. He's okay. killing it. He's killing awesome. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. He's someone, and I'll give it to you to put in the show notes so they can, uh, they can actually click on this dude's links. He does. I have no connection to dude. I just check for his joints. Like, yeah, and awesome. I, and, I, and I fully dig it. Yup. Well, that's the thing. I love. I love the. That's why I. We also have the show. We like to have guests on because I want to share other people's. I love yeah. sharing people's music with with people. For sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's exciting for, for people to discover new music that they never heard I, before. You know what? <laughs> and what makes this really dope, you guys? Because you guys know that vibe of discovering. Yeah. As soon as I send you the link and you see it and you see his YouTube and you hear it, you'll be like, I see what Mo's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this guy's that. got that feeling like that makes you like, oh, yo, oh. Yo, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah that's it's awesome. It's in French, but it's still in there. It's still like, yeah, yeah, yeah I get this. Hey, well, uh, based on two of your lyrics, uh, of a, on a Sophie's Choice question, who do you think would be have a more enlightening conversation, Barbara Walters or Roger Waters? <laughs> wow, I would definitely say Roger Waters. Oh yeah, that would be Roger interesting. Roger Waters. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love Bob. You know, Barbara Walters is classic, but but no, Roger Waters of Pink Floyd is you know kind of done everything that I would would ever want to do with with, with with beats and rap, and you yeah. know is is the man. So I mean, I definitely Roger Waters. Man. Now, one other <laughs> lyric too that came from: What's a better screenplay, Twelve Monkeys or Twelve Angry Men? But but you, I don't know if you know this. But you just went 360. Oh. And I'm about to drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and here's why. Guess who produced 12 Monkeys, man? Was it Lupe Luke? Song. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, it was a it was a pleasure getting you on. I'm glad that we got it to work out. Oh man, um, I'm so happy to be able to to share with you guys. It was really yeah. a great experience, and, and really appreciated. Great questions, great energy, and uh, it's just it's just been a real honor for me to spend the time with you guys. So really, really, really appreciate it. Have a great Amazing. rest of your night tonight. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of right. Saturday. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your patience. All right. Cheers, Bye. Anthony. Thank Peace you, to guys. Thank you. Peace. Through the devils and the haters, I accelerated like an elevator in the Himalayas with the motivators and the generators meditated, meditated. I'm just sweeping through the terror and the hell. Really on a really nothing silly XL. Got my city with me and propel. Awesome. I, yeah, I knew I was going to run on long. I do it all the time. I didn't even get to nearly any of these questions. But let me ask you a couple. Or should we just get out of here? Well, ask me a couple real quick and then I got to pee. Oh. Okay. Shoot. Well. Well, maybe I'll save them. Okay. You know, I'll, I will do the philosophical though. No, uh, I, but I, yeah, I wanted to let him okay. be able to get out of here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is violence a sound strategy to bring about significant political and social change? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes. That's all. I mean, that's how everything has been changed. Yeah, through like some. When we were talking about the Dutch and the Danes and the slavery and the slave trade, and I mean, it didn't start with the. Uh, people b- being shipped here, Chinese and Africans being shipped here. I mean, if you look back in history, it's a, it's forever. We've been in slavers and we're still in slavers. Sure. Like there's a bunch of slaves still. Humans. Humans. Yeah. And, um, Humans are in slavers. 
Yeah. 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 Not not you and I. No, I know, but you're not saying like a specific. You're not saying yes. Americans only or no, like no, no, humans. No, 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 yeah. not just Dutch sure. and not yeah. not just the Vikings and yeah, yeah. Like I mean, in in Africa, the Jews were the f- Jewish people were slaves. But, uh, and, so and b- before then, there were slaves. But is violence a sound strategy to bring about the change? Well, how else has anything ever been changed without it? Without uprising, and I don't think that it's a good way, but I think it's kind of the only way. Sometimes it has Isn't to it? be. Well, I don't, I don't know. To. I know that wasn't. I know Martin Luther King's um, initial stance was, you know, um, nonviolent protest. And then they assassinated him. Yeah, I know. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. So yeah, it's a philosophical so I, no. Question. I don't. I, I think don't. that like in, um, I think that it would be w- lovely, wonderful if we could change things peacefully but i think the way change actually does happen if it's something significant or like yeah right. like the ukrainian that whole thing that's happening there yeah Shoot. i hate to say it but that's the way borders get shifted that's the way yeah. laws get shifted dang it but i would love it if it was like yeah we'll just all go vote and We'll all not be violent when we go. To do yeah, that, because but. usually the topics that need to be changed are the kind of topics that obviously, if they were bad enough, they shouldn't even have been a policy. Mm-hmm. And so they're already yeah something something extreme has to happen for the people. Yeah, yeah. All right. So no, I'm not saying it should be, but no, but you're right. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot what you were asking. <laughs> but yeah, usually it's okay. the. the, the Violence brings violence, so whatever is needing to be changed is probably violent or hurtful in the first place, which creates more violence to get it changed to to a, a space where it's not. Right. Yeah. Well, all okay. right. So, hey, listen, people, obviously check out Error Tape 1, and that's Error, E-R-R-O-R, Error Tape 1, and keep your eyes peeled for Error Tape 2. That's part two of this, Error Tape. Error Tape. Error Tape. Why do I have a hard time saying the word error? I don't know. I thought you were doing a... An error. Error. <laughs> error. <Yeah. laughs> no one knows. Is, this day and age, no, no one knows a Ted Kennedy. Uh, Ted error. <laughs> error. Check out Error Tape. Error. Is, error. My, is it, was his sister Rosemary or his yes, daughter? Yes. No. His error. sister. Oh, geez. No, <laughs> don't go into that. That's We're not we're not on any kind of level that we can make jokes about that. Um, and then since we're talking France, I'd like to share two of my favorite okay. quotes real quick from French writer Voltaire. Mm. Yeah. When you read that. No, I didn't. But remember I told you I like, like vo- quotes. I like quotes a lot. I just, okay. I always have. And I write them down on my phone. So here's one of them. Common sense is not so common. Mm. And then the other one. It is difficult to free fools from the, tra- from the chains they revere. Oh, here's the third Wait. one. I didn't get it's that. It's difficult to free fools from the chains they revere. Mm, so they hold themselves down? So that Pretty means? much, yeah. Okay. And uh, judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. Mm-hmm. Those are pretty awesome quotes. Uh, anything else you want to finish off with? Uh, next uh, episode, keep your eye out for, or, for it. You know all of the places to find us at DOD45. Um, artbytie.com happy March Madness everybody the book is almost complete uh, uh, we've almost well no just go to the artbytie.com and and uh, pre-order a book and I'm gonna go take check it. out this Voltaire Volt, Voltaire's got fellow oh my gosh he's that, uh, no, <laughs> but I've know, never but, read him but uh, he's loaded with like he's like one of the he's like a yeah one of the wisest people in the world okay and he all he's got a great he's got great quotes on suicide. One of his well, he has this other one that we used it in one in my movie twice today. Mm. It was um, it's basically saying the man who killed himself um, would have wished five minutes later f- mm. that he didn't. Mm. So it's something like that. It's pretty awesome. Okay, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy drawing, happy conversing, and God bless, my friend. Wow, I know. Okay, okay. goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Cheers. Thank you for joining in on yet another episode of DOD 45. 
please hit the subscribe or follow button so that you never miss an episode. You can even go one step further by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts to help other interesting people like yourself find our podcast. You can find me at Art by Ty on all the socials or at artbyty.com. If you'd like to follow this podcast on social media, we are at DOD45W on Instagram, or you can go over to our website, DOD45.com, where you can shoot us an email, join our mailing list, and watch all of our past episodes. Thanks for joining us. Peace.